Hello everyone, welcome to day two of the 12 days of Yule. With this 12 days of Yule challenge, there are a bunch of content creators that are posting 12 videos in 12 days, each with very specific prompts. And I wanted to kind of show you how to actually find all the other content creators that are participating in this challenge. So if you type in the hashtag 12 days of Yule into the search bar for YouTube, or you can find it on any one of my YouTube videos for this challenge, I'll have the hashtag 12 days of Yule, not only in the title of the video, but also in the description box, but go to that hashtag. And so you want to click on the hashtag of 12 days of Yule. Once you click on that, you will see all the content creators participating in this challenge. So for day one, we had so many people participate and a lot of people are using this as a way to start their YouTube channels for the first time. So I definitely encourage you go check these creators out. Hear some new voices in the community. I think that's so, so important. I'm really excited to have discovered some new people myself. So I will slowly be making my way through all of these videos. I'm gonna try my best to watch all of them, but I'm not gonna lie you guys, I cried a little bit. I cried because of how many people are participating from all different walks of life. I mean, this is just an example of some of the creators that have created for day one. And I think some people are creating for some days and then some for others. So definitely check back on a daily basis to watch everyone's videos. I just selected some channels at random here. But yeah, it got me a little bit emotional, I'm not gonna lie. I got me a little bit emotional to watch all the videos. Thank you to all those who are participating. Definitely don't miss out on checking out these other content creators. I'm Meg here with my scrumptious parlor maid parfait. And of course, Miss Alice Poopers is here too, although she's a little sleepy. And today we are very excited. Today's topic is to share your Yule altar or your decorations for the winter solstice and I have a lot that I want to show you because it also includes a lot of my winter spell work. Before we begin, I have to show you, look at this tiny little peanut. She loves to sleep in the tree. It's hilarious. If I can't find her, I know that she's somewhere in this tree. So here's my Christmas slash Yule tree, including the Yule goats. I have two of them on the tree. And even though I identify more as pagan than anything, I do still celebrate Christmas as a cultural holiday. Here's my other Yule goat. And before I get into my winter spell work, I wanted to share with you our little gnome tree. I'm taking you across the living room now because this is our gnome tree. We are very much a gnome household and this tree specifically honors the house spirits so you can see our little gnome decor <laughs> look at these cute little gnome heads i also dried some oranges and put that in the tree as well so this tree is for the gnomes and the gnomes only to honor our little house spirit creatures they help us in our garden and i'll talk about my relationship with the gnomes tomorrow when we talk about reflecting on magical practices and whatnot anyways back to my yule altar and my winter spell work this table is just for decor and crystals and this nutcracker is something i got a long time ago so it's always part of my winter decorations but this is our first piece of spell work so these are cinnamon pine cones and what we do my partner and I write down a bunch of things that we are grateful for in our lives and I'll put some footage up on the screen of us actually doing this so around this time of year we like to give thanks we like to express gratitude so we write down on pieces of paper everything in our life that we are grateful for our home our families our relationships our jobs that keep us fed our other passions in life our health just so many different things and it's also a great point Point of reflection too because I find that just winter in general is the perfect time for reflection. I know a lot of people really don't like the winter season because it's dark. I mean the moment you wake up it's dark. The moment you go to bed it's dark. Some people get seasonal depression. It can be a really difficult harsh time of year and historically it was for our ancestors. It was a very harsh time of year to survive the winter. But I wrote something on my Instagram recently and I kind of wanted to read it here too because the older I grow, the more I fall deeply in love with each season. Autumn was of course my first love, and then I really grew to understand what winter means for me. And so I wrote that my love for winter can be found in the subtle poetry of crystalline snowflakes adorning and purifying our landscape. It can be found in the dark coziness of metamorphosis as nature undergoes a period of rest and transformation. Winter is quiet, winter is powerful. So even though this can be a difficult season for a lot of people, it is absolutely necessary for us to go through this period of reflection, of gratitude, to be able to reflect on our lives and just take a pause and a deep breath. So all of these papers inside of the pine cones, these are going to sit on my altar 
until January 1st. So on New Year's Day, we'll actually take the pine cones, we'll take the, the pieces of paper and we'll burn them in a fire. We'll have this big, roaring bonfire to symbolize the return of the sun. Obviously, it's still the dead of winter, but we're celebrating that winter will not last forever. And we also wanna burn these pieces of paper to continue the prosperity around these things. So it is an act of gratitude, yes, but it's also a spell for prosperity because when we burn these pine cones, we're essentially releasing our intentions out into the universe for manifestation about prosperity towards all of these things that we're grateful for. And then of course I have my deer and stag symbolism here. I feel like that's very appropriate for this time of year. The trees to represent the forest. This is my talisman for the horn god. My cousin made this for me and it's so beautiful. I did a little ritual with it to really link it to the horn god for me. And so I really want to honor him this time of year. I feel like the symbolism is just perfect for that and our relationship. Of course, next to a stag, very fitting. I also have a giant skeleton key here. So this skeleton key is something that I use when I'm wanting to travel to the other world. So I use this key a lot during Samhain, like autumn time, and then a lot during Yule, winter solstice, winter time, because I'm really going inward and doing a lot of astral work and working with the other world, contemplating the themes of death and resurrection. And so this key has been consecrated for being a token to help me get into that altered state of consciousness for my prayers, my mantras, my meditations, all of that. So I always place this sacred key on an altar like this to really symbolize the other world and my connection to it. And it helps enhance my experience too. So if I'm doing some winter spell work right here, it's nice to have this key present. And then I have some very simple candle spells going on here. So these three candles have been anointed for protection, prosperity, and prophecy. So I took some oils, three different oils that pertain to my intentions. And then I drew with oil the sigils onto each candle. And those are kind of the three energies that I like to work with this time of year. Protection, obviously, is a given. Prosperity during a time that seems really harsh and cold and difficult to endure. And I find that that symbolism is really interesting, looking at three, these three candles, how these two are incredibly bright, and this one is really, really dim. So I just find that <laughs> really interesting. I might have to do some additional workings around that. And then this last one for prophecy, you can see how bright this one is shining in comparison. This is the candle that I use to tap into my psychic abilities, again, to tap into the other world. So it kind of ties into my skeleton key here. Here. This candle has been anointed for the specific purpose of me being able to communicate with spirits to receive divine messages from my ancestors or whatever other higher powers that belong to source. Over here, I have my little tiny hut for the winter spirits. So if any winter spirits want to come visit, oh, I have my cauldron as well, which is just burning some Yule incense right now. But this tiny little hut has little fairy furniture in it. I put a bunch of crystals in it. You've probably already seen this if you saw my last vlog because that's when I was setting this up. But I set this up just as a little home for the winter spirits. If they wanna stay a while, they are more than welcome to. And then of course, I can't forget to show you my winter village. I, I'm in the kitchen right now, so that's where I'm at currently, but I have a winter village set up as well. I really love tiny houses and little villages. You probably already saw my Halloween town for <laughs> Samhain, but I love setting these up for the little winter spirits to live. Any sort of little fairy huts or little houses. I just want this to be a cozy, inviting area because I enjoy having spirits in my home. I really do. Let's see, it's a little bit too dark to kind of see everything. I probably should have filmed this in daylight, but I also kind of felt that filming this at night for my altar tour was best. It just really captured the magic a little bit more. This one looks like a hobbit hut and I love it. Um, you can't see over here. There's like a pond over here with some trees and then we've got a bunch of, oh, we have a headless man here because my cat knocked him off and so here's his here's his head. I need to super glue his head back to his body. So ignore that. Whoops. Sorry, buddy. But yeah, hopefully we get some heightened spiritual activity and hopefully they decide that they want to stay in these little houses. I will say that ever since I started doing this and dedicating my little tiny villages to house spirits, we have gotten so much more paranormal activity, which is exactly what I wanted. So it definitely works if that's something you're into. Thank you so much for watching. I absolutely cannot wait to show you the rest of my rituals and spell work that I'm gonna be doing for the remainder of this 12 day Yule challenge. And just a reminder, don't forget to check out all the other channels doing this challenge as well. If you click the hashtag on the title of this video, 12 days of Yule, you will see all the other content creators doing this challenge, sharing their stories, their rituals, their altars, their personal practices, all that stuff. And thank you to everyone participating. This has been really, really fun so far. I will see you all tomorrow.